Hey everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Grass. I'm going to get right into it this time and um, show the, it looks like, five pieces that I have again um, for this video. So here's the first one. And this piece does not have a name as of yet. Probably something to do with confetti because that's what it reminds me of. Reminds me of confetti. Let's see if I can pretty good shot there of the sparkle and that is all that Martha Stewart leaf glitter so there's piece number one and this piece doesn't have a set of earrings but that doesn't mean that by the time I list it I won't have made it <laughs> made a set they may just be glass bead earrings, but uh, I'm not sure yet. I may just list it just like it is. Alright, piece number one. Alright, set number two. Kind of a beachy piece. Piece of faux pua shell. Abalone. Piece of coral, you know, piece of faux coral. For the bail it's got a you know hot it's oh lordy <laughs> yeah it's hollow so that the wire can run through it the earrings are glass beads with a piece of real abalone shell hanging from them um this piece right here let me get to where i can see it sorry um i know i said i don't do caning but this is a mix of blues spiraled together and then it's wrapped in a layer of white and then I rolled it up into a shell shape and carved off some of the bits to expose the blue really cute and then this side has another glass bead to balance it out so what I say that piece number two set number two all right there's that one Sorry about that, just wanted to come back and sh show if I can. This has Lindy Stamp Gang sprayed on it, and then it's sealed on there to look, to make it look like it's got like, some salt spray on it, or, you know, something you picked up off the beach. Alright, set number two, once again. <laughs> okay, set number three. This is a completely new set and there's the earrings come down the pendant and again sorry I can't see whether I'm in shadow or has to come down there we go where I can tilt my camera then I can see so some polymer clay cubes at the bottom done with the uh, this is kind of a faux amber that's got the larger leaf glitter and then some microfine glitter in it hopefully that's in focus alright so what did I say this was piece number three <laughs> alright Okay, piece number four. Set number four. I don't know how. I don't even know. This piece is actually um, a very old, the pendant itself, um, piece done with the, um, sorry about all the ums, done with water removable tattoos. You know what I'm saying? Kids tattoos from the dollar store. It's actually what they are. And this is one that you get one every once in a while. It's almost like it's old and it doesn't transfer completely. So what I did was I filled in with colored pencil where it didn't transfer. And that's where he's red. And so I'm going to call this piece the Flame Dragon or Dragon of Flame. Something like that. So it existed quite a long time in the bag with the 
extra beads up here. Here's one of the earrings. And the extra beads. But I couldn't figure out how to put it all together until I did some research. Looking around on the internet, and that's a lot of times how I get ideas. And in most oriental artwork, dragons are associated with the sun in some way or another. So, I'm sorry, I've got Screaming Banshee black on me that I just can't get off. It's all over my hand. So, I apologize. I got everything else off except for that. And it's on there. So, let's see. There we go. It's supposed to look like a piece of jet, carved jet. Or obsidian or something anyway. Really sweet piece. I just love it. Love the way it turned out. I had such low hopes for it when it when it didn't transfer that I just almost threw it away. And as you can see, it's again the faux ivory. Although this time I did not antique the faux ivory, so that's why it's not as dark as the other pieces. And it's set on a piece of red cinnabar colored clay, and then on again on a piece of black. And it doesn't set level, of course, because why? Because it's got the logo on the back. So, there is set number four. Dragon of Flame, we're going to call him that. I don't know. <laughs> I never know till I actually go to listed, except for ones that have had their name for a long time, so. Alright. Okay, this is set number five for this video. And... Wow, don't you know, once again, this one actually has a name, but... It sure is escaping me right now. This one is one of the ones I was talking about, though. This is um, my original artwork done in colored pencil and then transferred to the raw clay. After that, of course, it's baked and then the UV resin is put on. And I'm going to try to get down there and show you if I can so that I can see. <laughs> If you can see, the background itself on this piece has a wood grain pattern. And then her face as well has a wood grain pattern. In the resin, there are layered pieces and therefore layers of resin, meaning after I transferred the image and baked it directly onto the clay I painted the dots in her eyes and she also has a little bit of metallic paint in her eyes then I put a layer of resin mm, no I'm sorry and I added a few of the leaves to her hair then I put a layer of resin then I added the squiggles over here in her hair. And there's actually one behind a couple of those leaves on the right side. And then another layer of the leaves. And then put another layer of resin. So she has two layers of resin that encase those leaves. And that is one of the reasons why I wanted the UV light. So that I can continually work on a piece like this without having to get up and go outside, carry it, risk dropping it, and waiting for a day when the sunshine is good and bright without being too windy because if it's too windy then you just get dust in your resin even though it cures really really quick. Here in Texas in the summertime I can put that out there and in five minutes it'll be done. Um, if the weather's cooler it takes just a little bit longer. It takes 10 to 15 minutes but hopefully inside I can control it all just a little bit better. Enough to maybe do some demonstrations and um, show you what I think. The only downfall to the Magic Gloss, the Lisa Pavelka's Magic Gloss, is if you do very much production with it, is it is, you know, a little kind of pricey. 
a six ounce bottle is almost fifty dollars still but I have probably a quarter of my bottle left and no kidding I've probably made 70 pieces of jewelry out of that one bottle so it's definitely cost effective and you can buy the one ounce size and it's like $9.99 so and you will get a lot of pieces out of that trust me so it's a really great product though I absolutely love it it's self leveling self doming it's easily manipulated with a toothpick to get it to the edge and stuff like that really a great product I can't wait to do some demonstrations and, and stuff with that um, on some of these pieces so again this is the last piece this has some of those sunstone um, beads and some little glass beads and then these long glass tube beads on the earrings it's got a little hollow branch that's the bale at the top that's made into the piece of jewelry and then this tube bead that was made at the same time with the same clay and then some uh, little polymer clay leaves that just have the um, ink of gold on them and the gold mm, I think it's the gold I think so could be the ink, the uh, old gold oh, let's see, can't swear alright number five that's it for this video and I still have probably oh goodness at least three more videos maybe four sorry y'all all right i shall holler at y'all later bye now oh these will be up in the uh, store hopefully sometime over the weekend i've really got a lot of work ahead of me and i don't want to uh, don't want to say i'm going to get it done when it takes longer because it does take a while so let's say hopefully by monday i'll have all these listed all right holler at y'all later bye now